Previously on the Between Two Yeti Kilimanjaro Adventure, we've survived three nights at camp, hiked through rainforests, wilderness, to ice and snow. I've started to develop a real soft spot for my porters, Innocent and Sakuru. Nelson has been keeping us up to date on what we've done and who he is. And we've been continuing God's work cataloguing the bathrooms on the trail. And as a side note, my mother is horrified by my language. So moving forward, we're bleeping out all the f**ks, the f**ks and the f**ks. I'm Lee Savage and I created Between Two Yetis, where we take our Yeti coolers all around the world and meet people from all walks of life to learn what it is that gets them out of bed. Our aim is to show the humanity in the world by giving people the opportunity to share their story. This is Nelson Dellis. He's a four-time USA memory champion and runs a charity called Climb for Memory, where he raises awareness of Alzheimer's disease by organizing climbing expeditions on some of the world's greatest mountains. We decided, why not take the show up a mountain on one of his next trips? So we worked out how to strap them to our backs, got together some friends, and flew out to Kilimanjaro. This is our adventure climbing to the roof of Africa. tent again for the umpteen <laughs> time. Tomorrow we're going to film this chaos. <coughs> but you open the gate, the door, and this is it. And that's what it's all Day four, how are you feeling? Woo! Ah. The mountain has not broken has not broken me yet. Okay. Well that's a good alive. sign. I'm still alive. <laughs> but, uh, it's getting tough with the altitude. Uh, but hey, gotta keep positive. Yeah. Pull it, pull it. It's always these more first in the morning, it just seems so much harder. <laughs> it was really funny. Ooh. Did you see this line here, where the sun is? Cold, too hot. Cold, ball sweat. So this is the route we're taking today. All those little dots up there. We're in a traffic jam here, human traffic jam. Uh, porters need to get through with their bags, as well as all these uh, amateur climbers. <laughs> I love how you just disregard them as amateurs. <laughs> hey, I'm one too. Maybe. No, definitely not Everest. Everest is high. Everest higher. has traffic jams. For sure. You ever seen those photos? Up on the fixed lines, you can't get around people. Yeah, yeah I didn't think it was like this though, where you have oh, to wait. It's worse. It's worse. Yeah. So you have to wait and freeze. Yeah. That's why there's a lot of people will get frostbite. I mean, not from this, but up there. So it's a new fact, we didn't know. Like now you know. Yeah. Now you know. Okay, so just picking up from where Nelson left off, the traffic jam not only goes that way, it's all the way up the face. What's up? Arm armpit check. <laughs> Smells pretty bad. You can smell it through that. I can smell it through bad. that. Mm. Actually, it's not that bad. Really? Wow. I mean, it could be worse. Use wipes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
So, one of the issues, one of the issues I'm terrified of, as we all know now, as Gerald has shared this moment with me, is chafage. So, body glide. <laughs> yeah. You never regret putting too much on. In fact, I could just glide my nipples. Yeah. All three of them. <laughs> I got three nipples, you see. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this, I suppose, is like Grand Central Station. <laughs> uh, not quite. All the trains, all the traffic comes in. <laughs> For sure, uh, that traffic jam we ran into was like every major interstate. Long Island Expressway, 405. Right, so we're gonna. It's just the two of us. Just the two of us. We lost everybody a while ago, but we're feeling good. We are feeling good. So we're feeling strong. All the guy, all the porters just told us how strong we look. So you're from New York, and they do this all the time. <laughs> I'm sure they do this in Miami. I just haven't seen it. But we're gonna do a, a jogging tour <laughs> of Kilimanjaro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is our... We're doing a jogging tour. Doing a jogging tour. How are you looking? You looking good? <laughs> well, your, your camera is looking at your head. Oh, really? <laughs> it's probably going to be quite shaky footage. <laughs> <laughs> but this is how you catch up with your team members. <laughs> Except I don't see our team members. No. We're gonna have to go faster. We're gonna have to go a lot faster. Oh shit. <laughs> All right. Okay. So maybe it's a little dangerous. <laughs> oh God. So it seems in Tanzania, a little up and down, a little rolling hill turns into three or four of those. Is that? Okay, so Nelson. Yeah. That's been for my first true squat. Squat. Oh, nice. How there was you? nothing to clean. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. It's more of a, what do you call it, a clean pinch, as they say. Yeah, that's why probably, I don't know the percentage, but I'd say like more than 50% of the world shits like that. That's the way to do it. No. It's a lot more effort and you don't have to spend as much time. Yeah. But it's great. And that's a position. Yeah, it's a comfortable, like, this is how we, you know, as, as kids, this is a comfortable position. This is how God created us, people. We've been trying to f with evolution for the last 200 years. No introduction, just. Right. He doesn't need one. Let him do it naturally. He doesn't need an introduction. Magic. Magic. <laughs> did I do this in, in one time? No. I never did it? I don't remember you doing it. So I'll just show them, right? Yeah. As I say that. Um, hold on. If there's some that I miss, I'll come back to them, okay? All right, so starting with seven of clubs, yeah? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, so seven of clubs, king of clubs, uh, three of spades, three of hearts, Ten of diamonds, two of spades, six of hearts, uh, nine of clubs, 
this one I'll skip. I'll put it to the side. Um, King of Diamonds, Nine of Spades, Eight of Spades, King of Spades, Ace of Diamonds, Five of Hearts, Ace of Clubs, Two of Clubs, Queen of Spades, Five of Clubs, Five of Diamonds, Eight of Hearts, uh, let me put these next three to the side, sorry. Uh, nine, nine of hearts, seven of hearts, queen of hearts, um, six of spades, two of hearts, four of spades, queen of diamonds, five, uh, four of diamonds, five of spades, three of clubs, four of clubs, jack of clubs, uh, jack of spades, three of diamonds, nine of diamonds, four of hearts, eight of clubs, ten of hearts, uh, six of clubs, king of hearts, um, <clears throat> uh, seven of diamonds, uh, queen of clubs, ten of spades, um, ace of spades, Jack of hearts, Jack of diamonds, two of diamonds, and eight of diamonds. Yeah? yeah. Okay. So, hold on. Um, and then, so these, um, so hang on. I think this one is ten of clubs. Yes. Yeah. Uh, seven of spades. Yes. Ace of hearts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then I think this one is the ace of diamonds. No! Six of diamonds. Ah. Uh. Wow. Oh, you're the worst! So can you, God. Can you explain how you do that? Yeah, yeah. Like what you, yeah. Did? I know. Uh, so every every card, I give a picture. So like for me, and I've learned this. So every time I see a card, it's the same picture every time. So instead of having to see, to memorize, you know, it's seven of clubs, a king of clubs, three of spades, like the suit and the number. I just see it as one thing. So seven of clubs is Batman. There's some system that I came up with to give the card that number, but I've learned it so that every time I see this, I, I, I see Batman, as if I'm looking at a picture of him, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea is that Batman, whatever that, I, that pops up in my head as, is easier to remember than a seven and this symbol, right? Okay, so then what I do is that every person that I have a picture for, for each 52 cards, I have an action and an object associated with them. So Batman, he's always driving a... His action is driving a Batmobile, and his object is a Batmobile. Another example is Three of Hearts. This is my friend Jana. She's like a fashion blogger. So her action is always like applying lipstick, and her object is a bar of lipstick, or whatever you call it, a stick of lipstick. So what I do uh, is I'll put three together, right? And the first one will always be the person, the second will be the action, and the third will be the object. So what that does is it gives it a really bizarre mix of things, right? So seven of clubs is Batman, right? And it's the first card, so it's always the person of that card. So I, I see Batman. King of clubs is Tiger Woods, because he's the king of clubs, right? Um, but he, he's in the action slot. So I take his action, which is swinging a golf club. So, so far I have Batman swinging a golf club, right? The last one is the object. This is a sniper. Um, and his object is a sniper rifle. So, putting that together, I have Batman swinging like a golf club, but he's swinging at a, at a sniper rifle instead of a golf ball. So that weird little image I store in um, what's called a memory palace. So it's where you take like your apartment or your house, something you know pretty well. Like we all can imagine our houses. Um, you start at the front door, right? And I, you picture the first image there. Right, so Batman is golfing a sniper rifle at my front door. Okay, so then I move on to the next three cards. I do the same process, it's my friend Jana. She's punching a snake. And um, I place that you know, in the next place after my front door. So if you imagine opening the front door of your house, you're in your entryway. So there is my friend Jana punching a snake in the entryway of my house, right? I keep going. Stephen Hawking, his face is, um, Actually, this was supposed to be there. Uh, his face is a Game Boy. I 
put that in the next location. It's James Bond is driving a donut. Uh, my friend David, he's solving a mountain. At some point, actually, I have Natalia. Uh, her boobs are scissors, a pair of scissors. Um, so there's just weird combinations, you know? Um, it sounds like a lot of work, but it's just practice. Card? Pra- practice, yeah. Um, a lot of them are... Yeah, but I combined it into one thing. So it's, some of it's intuitive, like um, a lot of the face cards, for example, like Queen of Hearts is my mom. Because hearts is like family, and then Queen of my family, I guess, would be my mom. King of Hearts is my dad, right? So some of those I just, when I decided what they were going to be, just kind of said, okay, what could that be? King of Diamonds is James Bond, because I just picture him playing like casino style. King of Diamonds is like a... What's the dirtiest one? Uh, well, you can get some pretty dirty mixtures. Uh, How deep did you... Queen of Spades is uh, Jennifer Connelly um, from her Queen for a Dream. So her action is getting uh, right. The yeah, the right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So that when that one gets thrown in the mix, it's nice. It's great when I see my mother so followed <laughs> by that card. <laughs> so yeah. We could watch this back and we could see that flourish as a moment when that card comes. The little up. twinkle in my eye. Yeah. <laughs> But no, uh, where did you, oh yeah, actually I had a, it was my ex-girlfriend, not Natalia, a different one from a long time ago, Ace of Clubs. She was being crucified by the dildo. So, and that was happening in the living room of the house I was using to store it. So the reason you use the memory palace is that once you place all those images there, you can go back through that same path, starting at the front door, and just pick up the images and then translate them back to the card. So when I go back to my front door, I think, okay, it was Tiger Woods. I mean, it was um, Batman golfing a sniper rifle. And then I know my system so I can translate it to actual cards. So seven of clubs, king of clubs, three of spades. You guys don't know that system, but um, the image, you remember the image, right? That's the whole thing is you're turning this complicated set of, you know, numbers and suits into things. How does the competitions uh, work? Memorize. Yeah, so there's different events. One is that one pretty much have someone shuffle it and then you have to look at it as fast as you can and then you get a second deck that you have to put in the same order um, correctly then you do it with numbers they give you random numbers you got to memorize as many as you can then you do it with names and faces and then poems lists of words things like that salut Eugene bon c'est Ilan on est à 3700 mètres environ on regarde cette montagne ici entre la neige et les montagnes. Je peux te dire qu'il fait un petit peu froid, mais au milieu de nulle part, il y a ces toilettes. Comme tu peux voir, c'est du bois qui, qui tient. T'as pas de porte, mais bon, normalement, il y, y a personne qui devrait t'embêter. Et donc, quand tu rentres, viens, 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 viens. <rire> c'est pas fait pour deux personnes t'as un petit trou il faut bien viser, il y en a qui n'ont pas bien visé il faut quand même bien viser l'odeur l'odeur c'est pas, c'est pas top <rire> mais, mais tu as l'aération <rire> et la dernière chose qui est bien quand t'as fini c'est que tu peux prendre un peu de neige et tu te laves les mains comme ça Nice. On fait comme on peut. <rire> A plus. Yeah. Can't see the mountain though. And we are back between two yetis on day four. Four of the Kilimanjaro special with Nelson Dallas. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Good. Uh, What's the behind scenes of how this? <laughs> We're on a boulder <laughs> at Camp uh, Karango Camp. Kilimanjaro is behind us in all its glory, only it's hidden behind uh, well, fog. This, this, it's not fog, is it? It's of clouds. Cloud. We're actually in the clouds, yeah. Is, I was interviewing Dan down there, and we suddenly realized this isn't mist, this isn't fog. This, no. These are clouds. We're I've in the never, clouds. I've, I've never 
I, I don't believe I've ever touched the cloud. You're touching clouds, touching clouds. clouds. Yeah. <sighs> so, let's just quickly review the up and down that we did today. The quick huh. up and undulating hill. Do you know, like when you go on the treadmill and it goes, do you want stair climb? Do you want um, interval or do you want steady <laughs> yeah. up and down hills? Take it away. Well, the guide actually said it was going to be undulating hills, undulating which seemed like a very specific word for someone who doesn't speak English. Anyways. Um, Three hills, then. Huh? Yeah. So we started out of Branco Camp. We went up the Bronco, Branco, Bronco wall. Uh -huh. uh, which, what did you think? What did you think of it? He's thinking about it. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't had time to really process it. It happened. Did you enjoy it? I think you did. Of, of, of course I did. I didn't. Okay. This. I didn't. I didn't. Not enjoy it. Yeah. I just don't know how I feel about that yet. Because okay. that that was seriously dangerous. It could. Yeah. I think two people have fallen to their deaths in the past ten years. Oh, so there's only two. Yeah. Oh, okay. But anyways, oh, okay. yeah. So we go up this wall. A bit of scrambling. Well, um, I had trouble because we had to hug a rock. And oh, I yeah. had the camera, which is like giving me 10 inches off. <laughs> oh, yeah. It balances a bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, climbing a rock face, and this is part and parcel of what you do, isn't it? Yeah, that was, that, was, uh, that was enjoyable for me. Was, Did we just boulder, by the way? We, yeah, yeah. This is a very simple boulder. I'm, I'm, get, I'm knocking everything off this week. Everything. You've done everything on this trip. Wow. And I just squat it. No. That's, an, that's another, maybe that's we can talk video. about that. <laughs> so we got to the top of the wall, beautiful view of the mountain, and uh, took a rest there. And then after that was all down, undulating. Um, and it's true what they say, that the down is hard. Yeah, it's pretty tough on your knees. If, and you got to pay attention more, I think, yeah. than you're growing up. Because you got to see your foot You twist your ankle at this point. You are done, aren't you? Yeah, that's, yeah. So, um, we've no injuries so far. No, everybody's good, which yeah. is great. And then we got up here, and here we are. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, the mountain is <coughs> there. But once again, day four, we still can't see it on camera. So <laughs> maybe tomorrow. Maybe we're not even really here. It's all a, maybe a ruse. Be... <laughs> <coughs> really, we're just in a climbing center in Miami. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on a set, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. So tomorrow, very short. Yep, straight up there. Mm-hmm. More undulation. Right. Whatever that means. Um, and then I do know that before the camp, there is a little bit of a dip and then one of those similar uphill battles. Mm -hmm. And then there we are. We're at our attacking point. Okay. So then we lay low for 10 hours. Yep. And then make an evening. Eat a couple times and then uh, we'll leave at midnight or so. Okay. In the dock. Cool. All right. So tomorrow's the day. Pretty much. It's a fuel up. It's and a sleep. long yeah. day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I really don't know what my opinion of this whole thing is yet. All right. Well, it you gotta cool you gotta absorb it. And it's a hell yeah. of a lot of fun. And my God. Yeah, it's a lot of new experiences that I've, I've seen on TV. I've seen on the internet. I've heard other people talk about. I've read about other people's adventures. Yeah. But actually doing it now. now you're in. That's awesome. It's um, and it's all the little, it's the tiny little details. That's what I was saying. Is like. I can tell you about Kilimanjaro, like, you know, go to this camp, you go to this high, what the summit looks like, but it's, there's so much more that you can take away, like these little things, whether it's some of the guides you have a conversation with, you learn about the culture, or as little as learning how to shit in an open hole, you know? It's, it's a skill that the Western world has long left <laughs> To their detriment. To their detriment. <laughs> it's a one wipe situation, people. It's a one wipe here. Clean pinch. Coming up in part seven is the day before we summit. Julio and I give you a quick orientation of tent life. Oh, I could, I could hear something. We actually get to see the target properly, and I start praying to the gods. Pedro one and we Pedro make two it are coming with to Barasu camp. Amy has a cheeky one. I finally get BO, and Nelson gives us a daily briefing with what is quite possibly the most stunning backdrop I'll ever witness pink clouds to match our pink yetis. Ah!